Hello all of YouTube and welcome to another top 11 list. As you can see by the top, it is of my top 11 favorite rappers of all time. Now before I start this list, I'm going to preface this by saying there are five rappers on here, some of them I like and some of them I don't, uh, that most consider to be the greatest rapper of all time, or a lot of people will put them in their lists, and they are not in mine. I will explain why uh, with each rapper. Uh, the first one is Biggie. Um, I don't hate Biggie Smalls. I respect the contributions he has made to the game of rap, but I only have his first album, and I have not been incented enough to get the rest. I will at some point, because I know he's just one of those rappers you just have to listen to. If you love hip-hop, you just have to hear his material. And, you know, he's great. He's fantastic flow, great lyricism, just a great slice of, of that classic style that just is awesome. But... I just haven't gotten the rest, and that's why he's not on this list. Uh, Kanye, I hate Kanye. I think he's overrated, completely overrated. That being said, I've been told to listen to his first two albums, which I will do at some point, and I've, what I've heard off of the first album, or actually, it was the second album, I don't completely hate, but I think that nowadays, he's completely overrated. He's, um, just not interesting. His voice is really annoying. His voice has been annoying from what I can hear of the early stuff. I don't like his voice. It's too whiny, too annoying. It's bleh. Um, so he's not on this list. He would never be on this list. Uh, Jay-Z is another one. I do love Jay-Z. Uh, I think Jay-Z is a fantastic rapper. Uh, even his newer stuff. Like, I've heard people say that his later stuff doesn't match up to the early stuff. That's usually true, but I mean, like, people really seem to dog his later stuff. I think it's good, uh, from what I've heard off of, like, the Blueprint 3 and stuff. While I think the earlier stuff holds up more, um, from what I've heard, because, again, I, the only album of his I own is the Black Album. I own, like, the middle, and I need to get the rest, because the rest I just have, like, the popular stuff from the other albums. And I plan on getting more, and he might eventually be added on this list. I may have to remake this list if I love Jay-Z enough, but right now, Jay-Z's not on this list. He's close to it, but he's not on it, um... Eminem is another, uh, he was my first rap review, I do like Eminem quite a bit, but he'd be close, but he's, he's just not on this list, he, he's, a, he's like Jay-Z, but I mean, he'd be more closer to this list, because I've heard all of his stuff, and I do like a lot of his material, he just, his lows are really low to me, like, recovery is just, ugh, and I, I don't like his really popular albums as much as some people do, like the Eminem show, if you've seen my review, you know, I like the album, just not as much as a lot of people do. Um, so he's not on this list for that reason. And the last is Lil Wayne. Uh, I really don't like Lil Wayne. Uh, I like a few songs, maybe. His voice is about as annoying as Kanye's to me. Uh, I mean, I, he just, he's, and especially his stuff I've heard off of his later work. He sounds lazy. He sounds just, just kind of like he's flopping around on the mic, and it's just, it's kind of sad, because I've heard stuff of, off of the block is hot and his early stuff, and he spits on those, but it's just, it doesn't hold up enough to me to want to put him on this list, uh, I'm not really a fan of Wayne, um, so yeah, uh, now for the ones that are on, that aren't on this list that are close, because there's, there's like, there's two sub lists and then there's a list, I put a lot of thought into this list, uh, as I do on my list, but this one I really wanted to put a lot of thought to before I made it, uh, the, the five that I really enjoy to kind of give you more of a what I look for in hip hop. Uh, one of them is Watsky. I love Watsky. I've promoted him on this channel before. His channel is right here. Uh, go check out Watsky. He's great. He's lyrical. He's fast. He's quirky. I mean, he's all of these things mixed into one rapper that uh, you don't see taken seriously. Like, he, he does serious subject matter while doing it goofily at the same time, and it's it's great. I love Watsky, and he's just he's so awesome, and I hope he keeps getting more popular as he keeps making new material. Um, another one is Saul Williams. Uh, kind of like Watsky in the poetic aspect, because they're both poets, but Saul seems to be more about depth of his matter, um, or his lyrical content. And uh, his beats vary in styles, which I do love, and I love that he worked with Trent Reznor, one of them, actually my favorite musician of all time, and I love that he, you know, made it, this industrial rap thing that was kind of new to me that I haven't seen much executed in the game. I, I love it. I think that he's great. He's 
on the cusp of the list, like he's really close. I hated leaving him off, but I left him off. Uh, another one, actually kind of two, because they're kind of from the same realm, but they're not, like they're from the same area, and I don't want to compare the two completely because they are two different beasts, but Dizzy Rascal and Lady Sovereign, um, I like Lady Sovereign uh, quite a bit, actually. I don't know if a lot of people would consider her an actual rapper and that would might take away her credibility, but I like Lady Sovereign. I think that she uh, can spit, uh, and I think that her beats are pretty on point. Um, I kind of like the accent thing. That's why I kind of lumped Dizzy Rascal in there as well, because Dizzy is both uh, great on the mic. His lyrics are pretty good uh, um, a lot of the time, and his beats are solid. I love his beats. Um... And his, his just the way he comp, he composes himself is so impressive. And um, that's why the two of them are, are close, but they're, they're kind of lumped together on the same spot because there's two more that I wanted to talk about that I really like, uh, and that is Common and Ice Cube. I like Common, um, and I'm glad he's doing an album with Nas. I'm stoked for that. Uh, you, you'll hear more about Nas later. Yes, he's on this list. Uh, I like Common. I think that, um, again, like, like Saul, he's so close to being on this list. I like his... I like... His his th thought behind his words, like the amount of thought he would put behind his words, and I love I love his just his style, I love everything about it, and I just mm, if I did more than top 11s, I would put him on there, but I don't. I restrict myself. Out of order is where these honorable mentions go, and Ice Cube, uh, he's just he's. He's Ice Cube. I mean, do I need to justify why I would almost put Ice Cube on this list? Ice Cube is... I mean, his later stuff is not as good as the earlier stuff, but, I mean, that early stuff is really good. Predator. Fucking America's Most Wanted. Just fantastic solo work to come out after being in one of the biggest hip-hop groups uh, in the early days. I mean, to just kind of pave his own path and do it well. He kicked so much ass. Love Ice Cube, but he's not on this list. Now for the nitty gritty, the list in order at number 11. A lot of people, again, this might take away credibility from some people. E40. Um, I like E40 because he's unique. He's he's weird. Like he's he's kind of goofy, and he's his flow is impressive yet just bizarre, and the, ooh, that just, that makes me laugh to hear it, and I love, I love the way he, I love the way he does verses, and I love the way he, he, he'll sometimes do simplistic rhymes, but do it impressively enough to where I kind of don't care, um, because I am a lyrical person, but with hip-hop, sometimes I'm not, like, I like E-40, some of his lyrics aren't really there, I mean, he made a song called My Shit Bang on one of his latest albums, and I mean, I love, I love E-40, but I mean, he's not, up to par with some of the rappers on this list, and you'll see with the rest of them, uh, especially further on down the list. But E-40, I just like him because he's, he's different. He's something different in the slice of hip-hop, and I hear him on a feature, and I love what I hear. Like, on the game album, on the new game album, he was goofy, he was funny. Like, to be on a track with Big Boy in game, it was weird, but it worked. I like it. He just, he fits, yet he doesn't fit. He's like an outcast on a feature, and his solo stuff just stands out as both bumping, yet crazy at the same time. And that's why I love E-40, man. E-40 is astounding. And at number 10 is uh, a member of a label that you're going to see pop up a few other times on this uh, countdown, but uh, Chris Calico. Chris Calico, while he's not as lyrical in some aspects as the other members of Strange Music, I'm talking about Tech 9 and Brother and Chunk specifically, because um, they are later on this list, but Chris Calico really combines lyricism with goofiness well. Like, he'll put... He'll have a song called Backpack about the booty and uh, fucking vitiligo on, on other albums. And he'll just... He'll make these weird mixes of stuff and make it cohesive. And what I love about it is he combines uh, elements of grime in some songs, elements of that, you know, big club banging sound, and just different elements of the dark, creepy side. I mean, he does so much within his albums, and I respect that, and I love his flow. He can do fast. He can do fucking sing. He can sing well. I love his voice. I love the way he just, he sounds on record. I think he's awesome. His features, even, that he's on are, again, like E-40, crazy good. Uh, mostly on the strange music stuff is what you hear him on, but, I mean, I think that he definitely deserves to be more out there because he can project so many different things on an album to make you go, huh, that's weird that this is on the same album as this, and that he's talking about this, yet the track before, he was talking about booty. I mean, it's, 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 it's weird, but it works. Um, 
That's why Chris Calico is amazing. And at number nine is another member of Strange Music, Brother Lin Chong. While he's not, uh, wasn't on Strange Music before uh, he was put on recently for his last two albums and for the albums to come out. Hopefully he'll stay on Strange Music because he really fits on that label. Uh, I like my hip hop dark. Uh, some of you know that, some of you may not. Uh, I like dark hip hop. I like dark lyricism. I like um, putting a lot of creativity into your lyricism. Um, that being said, not many like horrorcore rappers on this list, but Brother Lynch Hong does it to where it's not stupid. Like he doesn't dumb down his lyricism, if that makes any sense. Like he talks about killing, but even sometimes throughout an album, he'll justify the reason behind his fictional killings. And I like the way he his voice is like liquid. It's like it's like it's like. Water. I mean, his on especially on his last album, there was uh, the title track. There was a point where he just flowed so clearly and and just kind of smoothly. It was it was weird, and he just he he can compose these really dark, gritty beats with this great story to story to tell. And on his earlier stuff, it's a bit more crazy, and I like how he's kind of mellowed out but stayed dark like um he's he's gotten a lot of the acidy sound out of his music if that makes any sense um like in the earlier albums he kind of had an acid rappy feel uh he's kind of got rid of that i don't hate acid rap i just prefer this sound that he's going towards now especially with his last few releases and i love the concept that he's crafting and um I like the whole dark, dark gothic style that he projects, um, and I think that he's definitely a titan for a reason. I love his style, his flow, everything. Brother Lin Chong is just astounding. Um, yeah, that's why I freaking love him. Uh, and at number eight is Charles Hamilton. I want to thank Three Creation for getting me into Charles Hamilton because, oh my god, I, I almost didn't put him on this list, but I mean, I just, I can't not. Charles Hamilton is... I, I've said Tech 9 is the hardest working man in hip-hop, but Charles Hamilton is really the hardest working man in hip-hop. I mean, he's put out so many mixtapes, it's insane, and he puts out so many great songs, I might actually make a list devoted to my top 11 favorite Charles Hamilton songs. I mean, I, I love the way, again, like E-40 and Chris Calico, he combines Goofy with um, serious lyrics within mixtapes, while doing some of the most interesting samples that I've ever heard. I mean, he raps over the Cranberries, he raps over Charlie Brown, he raps over System of a Down. I mean, he does he does so many different styles of beats that it's it's it you can't help but go, what the fuck? I mean, I love I love the way he he'll let you in his world, but also kind of pal around with you on the same mixtape. I mean, I, I like how he'll take, for instance, the song November 10th off of his uh, mixtape, Crash Landed. He'll talk about um, kind of how he feels. He'll kind of introduce you to his life yet in a goofy way, but on the same mixtape he has Outside, which is this really passionately done song about... Um, wanting to be popular. I mean, he he's he's a great lyricism, and I've heard people diss Charles Hamilton. How can you diss him? I mean, he's just so awesome. I just, I can't, I love Charles Hamilton. Playing out, love Charles Hamilton, love his his mixtapes, love, I, I, I can't wait for new material that he's working on now. I just, I love Charles Hamilton. Thank you, Austin, for getting me into Tr Charles Hamilton. I'm very grateful for that. Um, in at number seven is Sage Francis. Um, Kind of in the same respect of Saul Williams. I love poets. I am a poet myself. I uh, I like the way Sage delivers his lines because again he'll mix the fast with the slow. I'm mean, I'm really impressed by fast rappers. You can tell a lot of these rappers on this list are fast rappers. He is definitely no exception. I remember my friend showing me the song Escape Artist um, of his um, Healthy Distrust, and I was hooked. I like the way that he used his comparison to magic to hip hop in such a vivid way that it just blew me away and I, I've i fallen in love with the way his voice sounds. He, he kind of sounds pained as he's rapping and I love that. It, it That passion really comes out in his uh, words. 
and you really know that he wants to represent what he's talking about or he really feels what he's rapping about and I love that. I don't like fake rappers. I don't like people that just fake their bullshit. Um, and Sage definitely, he makes creative rhymes. He does a uh, unique-ish delivery and I just, I love Sage Francis. I think that he is definitely a fantastic force in poetic hip-hop. And at number six is Ice-T. Uh, had to put him on here somewhere. He's ice motherfucking tea. I mean, while uh, he hasn't really done anything in a while, uh, he he's uh, one of those forefathers of hip hop that you just gotta respect. I mean, and he did body count. I mean, he fucking did body count. He, you can't you can't not respect body count. I mean, the dude did original gangster. He did just all of these fantastic albums and projects and things that are just fucking awesome. I mean, he's like he's like. That's why I can describe my love for Ice T as a, as a, as an artist. He he combined aggression with smooth, kind of like Brother Lynch Hung, just not as dark and creepy and stabby stabby. He's he combined except for like cop killer and shit. He combined his smooth aesthetic with his voice and stuff with these really aggressive, fierce verses, and I loved the way he did that. It was kind of like it was it it was definitely seemed different for the time. Just looking back on classic hip hop. And it was definitely a standout to me, and that's why I love Ice T. He's fucking astounding. Uh, I like his. Uh, I, I just to break it down. I like his voice. I like the way he sounds. I like the way he he delivers. I just god fucking amazing. And at number five is Nas. Nas is just he's fucking Nas. I mean, he his lyricism goes beyond bounds. I mean, enough people have talked about Nas's lyricism. Just to death. I mean, I, what I can't say anything positive about Nas that hasn't been already said. I mean, I've already tried with these other rappers, but I mean, Illmatic deserves his place in fucking hip hop history. I mean, and even past that, I haven't listened to the current. Like, I didn't listen to the Damian Marley Nas album, but I mean, I've heard it's really good. He has one of those styles that has been. Uh, tried to be repeated by so many people, but you can't top Nas in terms of his lyricism, his beats, his just his whole message. He definitely is one of those rappers that just brings this fantastic message to music. And he's one of the rappers that really helped me broaden my horizons of hip-hop because I wasn't grown into hip-hop and my friend gave me a couple of Nas albums along with a bunch of other hip-hop albums. He gave me a couple of Nas albums and I became instantly hooked. I loved the way he was just so behind his words. I mean, I'll say that a couple more times in this. And he definitely just, he he's fucking amazing at what he does and I cannot wait for his future material, especially the one with Common. The Common Nas album is gonna be fucking amazing. And at number four, you may think it's weird for me to put him above Nas, but Busta Rhymes. Uh, I think Busta's awesome. Um, I think that he's lacked a bit, but he his early stuff kicks ass. I mean, people want to flack him for being, you know, just fast, but the coming, have you not heard the coming? I mean, while it's goofy, it's also, like, deep, in a way. Like, his, his, his later stuff gets smart, you know, he gets more fast, 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 but... His early stuff really was, early, especially the coming, wasn't really that fast. He was just trying to focus on lyricism, and he, he did a great job. Um, and while I do love his fast rapping, I think this year he has killed the features that he's been on. His Welcome to My Hood remix verse fucking kicks ass. His Worldwide Shoppers verse is astounding. Busta has been on this year, and... I mean, he's had some falls, the BET Cypher, he wasn't the best in the whole Cyphers, but, I mean, he was still pretty fucking good. He is, his punchlines were on point. His punchlines on albums are pretty damn good. Um, I think that people should look past the fact that he just raps fast because people want to write him off as not being a lyricist. Look past that. I mean, while he doesn't have the best lyrics, he has some pretty damn good lyrics, and I think that Busta is pretty fucking good, and, yeah, that's why he's at number four. And at number three is Zack De La Roca of Rage Against the Machine and One Day is a Lion fame. And you may think it's weird for me to put him on this list, but like Nas 
And like Sage Francis and some of the other rappers on this list, he is behind his message. He is, he is passionate. And, I mean, while he's also screaming while he's rapping, he does a fucking great job at it. Uh, I think that he is so passionate that it's hard for me to not put him on this list. He was one of the first rappers um, that I had ever really heard uh, that was, like, around a lot when I was a kid. That's why I love Rage so much. I mean, Zach is just passionate. He's fierce. And he's just, he goes on. And that's why I loved One Day as a Lion. Because Audio Slave is missing Zach. That's why it wasn't as good. Um, all the other Rage projects don't have Zach. That's why they're not as good as Rage. I mean, while I love Street Super Social Club and The Night Watchman, Tom does a great job lyrically. Zach's fierceness is what makes Rage that much better than everything else. And One Day as a Lion has that, and I loved One Day as a Lion. I'd like to see either a new Rage album or a new One Day as a Lion album. I want one of those two. God, he's so fucking good with what he does. And he's so political. And I'm not even, I'm not even a political person, really. I'm beginning more political as I've gotten older. But, I mean, he's just fierce. He's so fucking angry. And I love it. Yeah, Zach De La Rosa. Phenomenal. Roca, Rosa, whatever. Phenomenal rapper. Period. And number two is Tupac. Again, like Nas, you cannot have... I mean, people can say you can't have Biggie or Tony in the list. You really you can't include... You can't not include Tupac in the list. I got into Tupac before I got into Biggie, so I've heard more Tupac. Again, Biggie would probably, like Jay-Z, be put on this list if I had ever listened to them later. But I've, I've heard Tupac for a while now. I love Tupac. I love, you know... I'm going to say this again. I love, his, I love his lyricism. I love even his... Uh, stuff that he that was put out after he died is still phenomenal. I love the the fucking I love that he still stands tall today above rappers in terms of composition, flow, lyricism, everything like that. His message can still stand up in some of his songs, and I love that. I love that you know Tupac was a visionary. I love the way that he just he went on tracks. I love the way that he. Combine mellow with harsh, while well, keeping that same style. I I I love I love the way he he did things. I love the way that he was as an MC. And I wasn't into hip hop when not when he was around, but I really have grown to love him as a rapper since. And I think that he is definitely one of the best for a reason, and still looked upon fondly for a reason. He deserves it. Um, while he's not number one, he definitely stands tall at number two. And at number one, Tech 9 I've said this before, Tech 9 is my favorite MC. He's the second hardest working, working man in hip-hop behind Charles Hamilton. Uh, the dude never fails. Nothing he has put out has been terrible. It's just gotten better. So, if, like, if you start at Ever Ready and go back, it may seem bad. But that's because it wasn't as... It wasn't out when Ever Ready was out. I mean, he just gets progressively better as he goes along. He has put out so many albums that I just, I I can't wait to review them. I can't wait to, to tell you guys how much I love Tech 9 in full detail. I, I love the way that he combines fast rapping with lyricism, which again, you don't see much. Busta's fast rapping is not normally as lyrical as his slower stuff. Um, Watsky is another one of those rappers that does fast lyricism. <laughs> Tech 9 is one that definitely does that. He's fast, lyrical passionate, all of that into just this great package. He just, he combines dark hip-hop with, you know, dance hits. Uh, he's like Brother Lynch Hung meets E-40, meets Eminem, meets fucking Busta Rhymes. I mean, he's so many different elements of hip-hop into one sound. I mean, Tech 9 is, is unique, yet kind of the same, because he combines mainstream sounds with this dark lyricism on, especially on the new album, with, uh, like, Am I Psycho, like, that great hook with those kind of dark lyrics, and he just, he, he's fucking astounding, he's lyrical, he's great, I want to see him live so badly, I can't stand not having seen him live, because he's, ah, I love everything he's done, Tech 9 is the best rapper alive, period, that's my opinion, though. Uh, sorry, I've been having problems speaking in this video. I don't know why. Just because I guess I'm so passionate about talking about stuff. But yes, you guys, good day situations. Be staying tuned for whatever I...
decide to create. I'll be doing another movie review actually tonight, so be looking forward to that. You guys have good days, life situations. That is my top 11 favorite rappers. You guys have another. You guys have a good day. I'll see you guys another day. I can't even say the outro right. Something is wrong with me today. I don't even know, but I'm gonna edit this video now. Toodles.